welcome back to the channel. It's Lit Life with Mana Reads, and today we're talking about cottagecore again. Now, if you're unfamiliar with cottagecore, it's essentially a just for fun internet movement that takes all of the cool and slash or interesting hobbies and aesthetics from older times and brings them to a new life. It's essentially your grandmother's style, but cool. I made a video earlier this year about all of my favorite books that fit this style, but what really caught my interest recently are books that are made specifically for cottagecore enthusiasts aka authors who have seen this aesthetic take off and decide to create a book centered around it. Now I have scoured the internet and I have found four such books so far and I am so excited to jump into them with you. Let's get to it. The first book on the docket is Cottagecore, a simple guide to the cottagecore lifestyle by Beatrix Barker. And right off the bat, I'm a little suspicious of this book because, well, it's, it's like, it's painfully thin. And then also, I don't know if it's just me, but when authors don't put their name on the cover, I feel like it's a red flag. And looking a little bit closer at the cover, we can see a little bit of a repetition, the same word in the title, the few of the objects kind of seem mirrored without like a clear pattern to the mirroring. And when we turn it over, we can see that the tea bag on the back completely covers the A in authentic. And also this book was shipped to me with these little dents already present in the spine. Bad vibes aside, let's delve into this. The author's name is not listed anywhere in this book. And when I checked the Amazon listing, Beatrix Barker is associated with four other cottagecore books published in rapid succession with relatively low to no reviews. Looking into the content and quality, she first provides an intro to the cottagecore before going into the history, the influence of the pandemic, the benefits of a cottagecore lifestyle, and how to cottagecore. I am not the best writer myself, but I have read over a thousand books in the last few years, and I do feel confident in saying that the writing is simplistic and it feels unedited at best. There's a lot of assumptions being made about the movement, going so far as to credit Greta Thunberg's environmental speeches with the upward swing of cottagecore popularity. Half of this book focuses on the hashtag cottagecore challenge, where you're supposed to do various themed activities based off of cottagecore aesthetics. But the items suggested here feel completely random, and the author really doesn't give any direction. Granted, she has a drawing that says get gardening or learn the names of some plants, but I also feel like if I'm paying for your book, then it is a fair expectation that you'd be telling me something more than a two word phrase. She could have easily typed up a couple of pages about indoor gardening, gardening in small spaces, common plants you find in nature walks, edible wild plants. There is so much she could have done with it. I just feel disappointed with how little thought was put into this book. Moving along, the second book is called The Little Book of Cottage Core, Traditional Skills for a Simpler Life by Emily Kent. Judging this book by the cover, we are already seeing so many better signs than the one before. Author's name, front and center. Tagline conveys exactly what the book entails. And the images are a bit mirrored, but at the same time, it's clear that they are done so in a pattern. But the one thing that does really bug me is if we look closely, I've had this book for maybe a week and it's already ripping. The binding chosen is this paper clad hardcover, which is something I just don't feel holds up very well for wear and tear of regular use. Going into the content, this book already looks 10 times better than the one we had last. We have a little intro that describes the cottagecore concept and in it, Emily emphasizes the simple homemade crafts and activities being the core of the movement. Her book is designed as a little how-to guide for learning lost or uncommonly practiced crafts. Each section starts with a few connecting paragraphs explaining why she chose this activity, how it relates to the book theme, and I really like how thoroughly she covers each of the seven craft chapters. She writes a how-to with the expectation that you are an absolute beginner but she also does it in a way that she's not talking down to you. I feel like if you are curious about gardening, candle making, herbal remedies, quilting, and more, this is a really nice intro book to those activities. She gives you theory, basics, and a few beginner's options for what to do with the craft. For example, in the baking section, there's three bread, three pie, and three cookie recipes. 
The recipes themselves are simplistic and they got some classics, but also something that's a little bit ravel dazzly as well. I do wish that there were more images in this book, especially as she introduces the core concepts behind the crafts. Because sometimes I would say the words, even though they are very descriptive, they just don't feel like enough. And the last thing is like, it's kind of borderline for me, but it almost feels like this book could have easily been retitled as Seven Crafts for Beginners or A Beginner's Guide to Crafting because there's just so much emphasis on the how-to aspect. You lose some of the cottage core aesthetic and the spontaneity of it. That being said, on a whole, I think this book works pretty well. I would say it's about three and a half stars, maybe 3.75. Next up is Cottage Core Inspirational Ideas, Crafts, and Recipes for a Wholesome Country Living. I am digging the cover. The quaint rustic images, the patterns, the gold foil, the cover photos, and the way that they're different from the front and the back, very good sign that the author spent so much time on this lovely cover. Delving into the table of contents, I, I'm i not gonna lie, I feel kind of in love. I adore how everything is organized according to time of year. It's not done a ton in books, but at the same time, it's such a fun way to approach cottagecore. After all, one of my favorite cottagecore books, Little House on the Prairie, was incredibly seasonal. So like most books we've seen so far, there's a brief intro to the movement and then we just jump into the cottagecore-ish things. The first month, unsurprisingly, is spring. We have a paragraph about the aesthetic of table setting followed by a recipe of fried elderflowers, then a craft page for making bunting, followed by paragraphs about how to choose candles and essential oils, and then a garlic pesto recipe. It kind of feels like we have the opposite issue that we had in the last book. The last book picked seven categories and explored it with as much information as any beginner could want. And this one feels uh, flighty. I do feel like that there is a level of fun and spontaneity in this one opposed to the last one. However, when it comes to actually using this book and as I page through it, I almost wish they had a little bit more grounding. Like they have all of the recipes grouped together in the beginning and then after that the crafts and then the aesthetics and then the photography. With everything scattered the way it is, it just doesn't feel very practical to use. And while the inspiration pages are pretty, I'm not sure if they contribute overall to the book. That being said, the photographs, the variety of items, and the, I don't know, like the excitement that these crafts give me, I would say bumps it up to three and a half as well. And the final one we have is the one I was most excited for. Escape into cottage core. Embrace cozy countryside comfort in your everyday. First off, I love the feel of this one. The texture of the cover, the cuteness of the pattern, and the layout all gives me good vibes. The only thing that is slightly disappointing is that the cover, you can see where the color is wearing off already. This one came in like maybe two weeks ago. I have like kind of carried it around the house and I put it in my backpack, but like I don't feel like that would warrant such a wear and tear on it already. Anyway, just based off of the table of contents, we have the broadness from the third book, the focus from the second, and nothing from the first, which is what I was hoping for. As always, we start with an introduction, but this is also the first introduction where I feel like I actually got to know the author a bit learning about her family, her life influences, and from there we start going into the different sections. One thing I like about how she organized and put together this book is that every section begins with an explanation. What does this mean? Why is it included? And how does it relate to cottage court? So for mindfulness, the very first section, that's not something I would have really thought belongs in cottagecore, but listening to her explanation and then her activities that go along with it, I really kind of vibe with it. I really like it. There's meditation, relaxing baths, and journaling activities as well. From there, we go a little bit more into the aesthetic of the cottagecore home and fashion, and then into more hands-on topics like gardening and food. I like how even when she's talking about the more abstract ideas, like having a cottagecore home, she still finds activities for the readers to focus on, like how to keep houseplants and what herbs are useful and easy for everyday life in your cottagecore kitchen. And as a basic gardener myself, I really like how she talks about what plants are both fun, 
practical and difficult to kill. <laughs> it is also kind of neat how she split up the activities according to season in the gardening section to make it easier for a newbie to manage their outdoor life. From there, the book goes into the outdoors, which is like foraging and basic adventuring, herbology, which talks about old tiny medicines, and it does delve a little bit into magic and crystals, which was interesting to check out, even though like it seems a little bit hand wavy, wishy washy to me. And then also at the end, just for fun, she has music and book suggestions. Several of those books are ones that I had picked from my original Cottagecore video, so I feel like my taste was spot on. So my overall thoughts on this one, I think this one is my favorite. I think like she just has a really good grasp on the Cottagecore idea. While the other books focus on the aesthetics or the crafting aspect, she looked at it on a whole and tried to tick off all of the boxes. From your mental outlook, to nature, to fashion, to food, to flora, to fauna, it was really cool just to read about all of that and see how it all fits in on this kind of funky kind of niche internet environment. Alright, so there we go. That's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you guys find any more cottagecore books, if you had any more niche subjects you want me to look into, I would love to. Thank you so, so much and happy reading. Bye-bye.